Hear now our invocation and Lord's Prayer. O Lord, our God, who by his word from the cross speaks to our souls, let it come to us now with assurance in the might of your Spirit that we may see in Christ crucified the revelation of your infinite love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. In the reading of these words, may we hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Every year our Good Friday service centers around the seven last words of Christ the seven last words that Jesus said from the cross. I will read those to you now. Let us pause for a moment of silence after each word. The first word, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The second word, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The third word, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. The fourth word, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The fifth word, I thirst. The sixth word, it is finished. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. 
A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of, of hyssop and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. As I prepared this meditation for today, I remembered that several years ago, I sat in a hospital holding the hand of my beloved aunt who had just had emergency surgery. She was agitated and in deep pain. A very difficult aspect of our time together was her frequent requests for water to soothe her parched throat. As she was not yet allowed liquids, the most I could do in response was offer to swab her mouth with a small dampened sponge. I recall her vehemently shaking her head no to this very unsatisfactory effort. After a while, I left the hospital in very deep distress. My aunt died soon thereafter, and to this day, I regret that I was unable to satisfy her urgent request for water. As we just read, the Gospel of John contains similar and haunting words of Jesus as his death became imminent. I am thirsty. Of course he was thirsty, after the appalling ordeal he had endured. Thirst was a part of the grueling torture of Roman crucifixion, as dying prisoners were often denied water. But the thirst of Jesus encompassed far more than grueling physical pain. In other, another more important dimension was the thirst of the one who came to fulfill his divine task to set us free. Pondering these words, I am thirsty, fills me with sorrow that our beloved Jesus, our loving Savior, the King of Kings, and none other than the Son of God, was so shamefully mocked and tortured by his executioners as he endured this most brutal pain. The pain was such that he could hardly even whisper the words, I am thirsty. What are we to make of this scene as we recall the torture and pain of the holy innocent? Scholars have long sought the precise meaning of the words contained in John's Gospel and most of them conclude the essential meaning focuses on Jesus's thirsting to restore God's children to their intended righteousness. This thirsting was for the salvation of humanity, a thirsting to fulfill his father's mission for him. I was particularly intrigued by the interpretation of Jesus's cry as set forth by Julian of Norwich in one of her visions, which she called showings. Julian writes, his desire, his spiritual thirst is for us, not for himself. This is his thirst and his longing in love for us to gather us all here unto him, to our endless joy, as I see it, for we are not now so wholly in him as we then shall be. Julian further states that this thirst was raging in Jesus, not only during his passion, but from the beginning. 
and that it will last until the consummation of the world. She writes, for he still has that same thirst and longing which he had upon the cross, which desire, longing, and thirst, as I see it, were in him from the beginning, and he will have this until the time that the last soul has come up into his bliss. Meditating on these words, can we even begin to fathom the depth of God's love for his children? And of course, I mean all of his children, not merely those who bear the name Christian. Salvation for all was in the forefront of Christ's passion, and it remains the rule for all of our brothers and sisters. While we so sadly mourn the current loss of life all around the globe, we might find comfort and consolation knowing that all who have died now rest in the palm of God's hand. Well, individually, we may not know the time nor the place, we are guaranteed that after our physical life's passing, we will go to the place that has been prepared for us by the risen Christ. The eye has not seen and the ear has not heard the glory that awaits. Amen. And now, as we go forth one from the other, may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. Amen.